So, hi everyone. Um, I think I've got about five minutes, so I'm going to try and cram quite a lot in in five minutes. Um, there's slides, there's loads of links on here for more information. There's loads of blogs and websites, but uh, hopefully I'm going to give you enough of a reason to come and check some of this stuff out. So, my name's James Rawlings. I'm uh, an engineer working at Red Hat. I work on an open source project called Fabricate. Um, so, diving kind of straight in very quickly, we kind of we kind of took a step back and step back. We wanted to work out, come up with these areas that we figured what it takes to build, um, build, run, uh, release, and maintain um, software. So this is how we actually. Uh, this is kind of why it's pertinent to the continuous delivery meetup. Um, what it is that we're doing to be able to build software and fast. Um, so we had a look at this. We looked at these areas, and obviously, there's a lot. Um, very close to the DevOps movement as well. So um, the whole continuous improvement, transparency, automation, not just automation around continuous delivery, but automation from every single aspect you can actually think of. Um, so uh, systems availability and kind of this social um, remembering around about the culture uh, efforts that are around associated with DevOps. Um, because we, uh, we work in engineering, so we're actually developing a project. So we relate this back to software itself, technologies itself. Um, this is kind of, icons can say a thousand words. Um, you probably won't know all of these, but um, just very, very quickly, this is kind of ha where a lot of this open source software, apart from Slack, everything on this board is actually open source which is kind of cool, right? Because everything from the previous slide that we figured that we need to be able to build, test, and run, um, and release software is actually, we, are, we, we have technology that a lot of us are used to using. Heard about Jenkins before. Um, that could be Bamboo. It could be Team City. Uh, Hubot, ChatOps, uh, Transparency. We were talking around project management, code reviews, version control systems. Uh, social around being able to ensure that we can actually leverage uh, in communication and we're communicating well, especially if we're, with things around with microservices, we have our cross-functional teams, we want to ensure that our communication we have is established and we have those good feedback loops as well. Um, as well as continuous improvement as well, we've heard a bit about metrics and, and, and monitoring. That's some kind of imperative. We want to ensure those fast feedback loops so that when we're actually building and deploying software, we're actually getting the early, we can fail fast. Um, and we want to be able to know how we're building, how often we're releasing, how often things are failing in different environments. And so we want all those kind of metrics to be able to come back. So for people that don't know, this is kind of Elasticsearch, Prometheus is for metrics, um, Grafana and Kibana for being able to visualize centralized logs and centralized metrics. Um, Ansible down here for automation, Arquilium for testing, uh, JBoss Forge, which is kind of used in the Java, project, Java world. Um, all of this is actually, because of containers, can now actually be run on, on a platform. And this is where we got down here, this systems availability. We've heard a little bit about Docker. Um, people heard about Kubernetes. There was one hand there, a couple of hands. So we now have a, a consistent way, because of Docker, <coughs> which is cool. We have a consistent way to build and package up our software. Have it with Kubernetes, we have a consistent way to be able to run our software. That's super high level. So if anybody, you know, if anybody's watching this, you know, don't shoot me for kind of skipping over the, the, the awesomeness of both Docker and Kubernetes, because they are cool. But really just kind of, you know, within five minutes, kind of, kind of give you that high level. What Fabricate is looking to do is to be able to Take a step back. Being able to manage all of this, and then say you've got a new project, you want to create a new CD job, sorry, a new CI job, you want to create a new Garrett review job, maybe a new repository in a version control system. I've had to have wait for weeks in certain companies to be able to just have a repo created. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. We want to be automating all of this. And this is just before we've even started our actual continuous delivery pipelines. But when we get to our CD, we want to be able to use um, reuse certain patterns around continuous delivery as well. Mentioned about uh, version control of actually you know, of, um, of, of pipelines and things. So really, just kind of 
everything on this board we can now actually run because it runs on a container. We run on a platform. They all have APIs. We can automate the communication of all of this. And this is kind of where Fabricate is fitting in in the middle. It's automating and managing and get wiring everything that we're looking at to in order to build and release and run software. Um, just kind of quick slide. So just this is Fabricate at the top. It's, an, it's a number of different microservices that run on top with the help of Kubernetes and then packaged up using uh, Docker images. So kind of, again, super high level. Um, you don't have to you know, be able to read this. The idea is to show that we saw a lot of the icons on the previous page. We can actually have one-click deployments, so setup and wiring of everything. I've had to set up a lot, all, every single one of those in previous organizations, and trying to do that myself, banging my head against the, you know, the desk, trying to you know, remember the configuration. But you can actually spin, uh, spin up a GOGS repository, which is your version control, uh, or uh, Kibana for your logging, Tega, which is awesome for project management. But uh, you've got Artifactory, Jenkins. But you can also have these templates that we have. And this is a, a CD pipeline. This will actually run a number of these things together and then set up all the web hooks inside so that actually everything's created. You don't have to do anything yourself, kind of one click. Um, so I just want to just highlight everything from the previous slide. We have a continuous delivery solution where we'll actually be able to make it super easy for people to be able to create projects. We don't want to just automate the continuous delivery, the movement of, the, of our pipelines, but also the creation of our new projects. For, we're having more microservices. We want more and more and more of them. It's going to be harder to manage the creation of all of these. We want to more automate everything. So Jenkins, um, the strategic approach, Jenkins has a bit of a bad press because it's kind of old. People think of it that way. That was Jenkins CI. Cloud bees are big. They, uh, people recognize um, um, Jenkins. Jenkins are, or CloudBees, their strategic approach to continuous delivery is not as you would normally know it. It's actually uh, the workflow, Jenkins workflow. And this is, what, this is an example. You can't put, actually see this. But this is actually just Groovy. It's a, Groo it's a, Groovy DS it's a DSL written in Groovy that sits in version control. And what it'll actually do, this actually describes your different stages and maybe nodes as well. So you can actually fan in and fan out using parallel um, steps and different stages to canary release, integration test, performance test. Uh, that doesn't say staging. That says, what was it, simulation? Was it? Yeah, 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 simulation, yeah, yeah. Um, human approvals. You want to have human approvals. You don't want to maybe just have, you know, deploy everything into production. You kind of want to have some kind of controls. And you may want th that through chat. You might want it through Garrett. Have a couple of people do a couple of plus ones before it gets... Uh, deployed out. So this is kind of where, where we're seeing this. And again, because of Kubernetes and Docker, we are able to do this quite easily. Um, what we've done then, as a result of that, we've actually, this is the Fabricate console. Um, there's loads of demos and you know, screencasts online. Um, we're actually able to dynamic, very, very easily and dynamically create environments. Because of Kubernetes, you have to sit in different namespaces. It's just super easy. Um, we're then able to automate the creation of our pipelines. You can select, you can extend those Groovy scripts, have your own, have that kind of governance. And then you'll have kind of this dashboard view. So you've got your environments, you've got your traceability, you commit messages. You can actually see real time when you do rolling releases, rolling upgrades, the actual new versions going through. Um, and you've got your commits down here. You can click into these pods. You can actually visualize the actual, for Java, this is uh, specifically, you've got this way to actually visualize what's going on inside. Um, but then we're adding support for Node and very, basically anything that runs in a Docker container can be run in this, in this approach. Um, and again, colorful logs. I think somebody was saying about colorful logs before. But this is the kind of Jenkins workflow logs as well. But again, just to highlight, I guess. Jenkins is, you could use whatever Bamboo, Team City, anything for your CI, but for the workflow, this is where Jenkins workflow is just orchestrating your pipelines. Um, and this is what we kind of get out of it at the end of it. That was kind of, I think, probably my five minutes. Um, hopefully, little bits of that might have caught the attention, I don't know. Um, if you want to find out more, uh, check us out. We've got loads of stuff on Medium. We love Medium. So there's an automation for microservices um, blog we did recently that kind of sets everything up 
um, from zero to everything, I think, in 20 minutes. You can, there's a vagrant image you can just do it yourself. You can just do vagrant up and do it all yourself. So, uh, uh, yeah, hopefully, yeah, check it out and have a chat afterwards if it's interesting.